five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, it is the Ramble, and the Ramble goes from now until midnight Eastern Daylight Time on the uh, right coast of the United States of America and out to the rest of the world. And uh, once a week we like to check in with somebody, so let's check in with them right now. Ladies and gentlemen... Always a pleasure to talk to the inimitable Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Now always a pleasure to talk to the great Alex Bennett. Yay! His wide-ranging knowledge is amazing. Well, you I... know, as long as I've known you, I think we're both, I assume we're both kind of atheistic, agnostic, but I, I've never really talked to you about religion. I, Always want to get your take on that. Well, I mean, religion, uh, as uh, Karl Marx once said, is the opiate of the people. Uh, and, and I think uh, no truer statement has been made, to be very honest with you. You know, um, uh, it, it is, it's a pacifier. And it's also a con job for people to make money. I mean, why does a priest have a job? Because somebody believes in God. And if they stop believing in God, he's out of work. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like a doctor who's got to find something wrong with you so he can keep making money. You know, So he, he, he has you come back and you do confession or you do this, you do that. Uh, you know, you, uh, uh, you know I, I don't believe in God. It, people always ask me, do you believe in God? And I went, no, but I believe in science. You know, I believe mm -hmm. there is a wonder and majesty to the universe, which uh, is pretty unexplainable because it's so huge and so vast. And so many years have passed to create just this little planet took several billion years. All right. Um, so that being the case, uh, uh, I, I realize there is something in the universe that's bigger than we are. But I don't think it's uh, a sentient being called God right it's just it's incredible to me so many people uh, just uh, fall into these fairy tales basically what they are all religions and yeah I just had to go close the door my door is open and we have guests staying so I had to close it uh, what were you saying about so many people what so many people buying these fairy tales I just it's incredible to me I, I think it's partly a I think it's partly because people know they're going to die and they can't accept that. And they they have to think there's something after this. Well, I don't know that there isn't something after this, but I don't know what it is exactly. You know, um, uh, and it's not that I want to keep existing. That's not the uh, that's not the point here. Okay, uh, it, it it has to do with uh, uh, what is it? How can I put it? It has to, to do with the fact... Well, let me give you an example. There's a show called The Planets, and it's on the BBC. And they talk about the creation of the planets. And they, they throw off terms like four billion years ago, like it was spare change. Mm -hmm. You know, four billion years ago, Mars was created because blah, 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 blah. What happened was there were all these little particles of dust that came together and made boulders, and then those boulders made bigger boulders, and they clashed into each other, and eventually we had planets. And that process took two billion years. Okay? So I'm watching all of this. I'm going to begin with. How insignificant am I? You know, my lifespan up till now is 79 years, and we're talking about two billion years to create a planet. So I'm pretty insignificant. You know, I'm just a passing dust particle in this <laughs> whole thing. So as I'm watching this, I'm going, well, then, what, where do I fit into this? You know, and uh, somebody, uh, I'm trying to remember who now, uh, said we are, we are made of the stuff of stars. You know, we are part of all of this. You know, and when we, when we leave this, we go back to that. 
somehow that makes a little bit of sense, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't know what my cosmic being is going to be. I think he's going to be a hypochondriac. That's for damn sure. <laughs> But I, I don't know, you know, I mean, what happens when we die? Well, I mean, I don't understand not existing. I can't, I can't cope with that, okay? Uh, and my father, I always like to tell this, my, I said to my father once that I was afraid of death, and I couldn't understand what it was like. And he said, well, you've been there before. Exactly. He said, before you were born, you didn't exist. And eventually you will not exist any longer. So you know what it's like not to exist. And so for the rest of my life, I worried about what it was like before I was born. You know, so... Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, we were yeah. all there once before. We were that, and now we're going back to it again. Now, is there reincarnation? Well, if there is reincarnation, you're not aware of it. So... Um, like if I was reincarnated, I don't know that. So am I then aware that this, it's just, I don't know. I just don't have an answer to it. But I don't, I don't believe in God as they believe in God. Okay. So uh, I, I hate, I hate uh, what uh, people win Academy Awards and I want to thank the, I want to thank God for this. And or I'm going, when they win a football game. Yeah, I want to thank God. Like, God is watching a fucking football game and cares <laughs> about you running down a field to cheering thousands. Okay? No. No. God doesn't give a shit about that. He's got more important things to do, like try and solve the problem of why he fucked up with the prostate. You know? Um, so Yeah, I'm, the uh, the poor... There's been mo many, the human body actually is uh, very poorly designed in many ways, so God should answer for that. Yeah, he should, an he should answer for my prostate problems now, you know. The fact that at 80, my age, there's a 70% chance I have prostate cancer, and it looks like I probably do. No big deal, it's very slow growing, it's, it's a different cancer than any other kind of cancer. But nevertheless, hey God, you know, to begin with, you put that, that prostate there, which is a donut, shaped the organ and in the middle of it you put the urethra where your pee goes through and as you get older it enlarges and squeezes on that and you have to pee like every five minutes what was with that construction god if you're so <laughs> almighty and so all-knowing wouldn't you have just moved the prostate over a couple of inches that's the uh, worst design than gm on their it, 80s cars i want my uh, you know and there's no warranty on this there's no warranty you know so you know, what, but but it, it, tell me about your non-belief in God and what you think happens to us when we die. Oh, I'd say pretty much what you think. It'd just be non-existence. And yeah, but and uh, don't, I've had the, I've had a couple of, uh, dreams uh, where I've died where I've died and I'm I'm really? like I'm floating through space and slowly decaying, and it's very cold and the. The dream of actually it wasn't it wasn't reassuring. I didn't like it. That is really a Larry Bubbles Brown dream, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I've had that one twice. So. You've had that one. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh, that's terrible, Larry. Yeah, and it's getting colder and colder and darker and horrible. Wow, I've never had that dream. Never had a dream about you know what it's like after I'm dead. So, you're very fortunate that you've had that dream. Is it a night? Is it a nightmare, or is it? Is there something about it? No, it's not scary, but it's just it's not. All, it's also not reassuring. So. Well, wouldn't that be terrible if you're going through space and, and and you're slowly decaying? Yeah. You know. Well, then again, that's what happens here during life. So you know, I mean, we're slowly decaying. Oh, I'm slowly. Or rapidly in I've, my case. I've got you know, I've got the neuropathy in my feet, and I've got the uh, teeth that are having problems and having to be worked on, and I've got the pr possible prostate cancer, and yeah, uh, yeah, I'm slowly decaying, I'm slowly falling apart. I had a friend of mine this last weekend, uh, J Jack Garfine, who at 88 got married. Uh, wow. And uh, he could barely walk. All right. And I'm going, I'm about to hit 80. That You mean eight years from now, that's going to be my fate? You know, that it's going to be like that? 
you know. So I, you know, maybe maybe I, maybe I don't want to get older. Maybe maybe eventually death is a welcome relief. That's what I'm. Uh, somebody said that who was some famous columnist who was dying, and he said some, sometimes he looked on death as a kindly uncle. <laughs> as a kindly <laughs> uncle. Take him take him away from all this crap. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> kindly uncle. <laughs> kindly Uncle Death. <laughs> uh, uh, kindly Uncle Death. Yeah, but, you know, and I have a lot. I'm sure you lately have had a lot of people you know who die. You know, once you start re- yeah. reaching 60, once, you start, you know. Once you get over 60, and then as the, as the years go by, it's just going to accelerate the number of people you know that are dying. And- a lot of deaths really bothered me, but you know the one that bothered me the most is a woman who died who I had fucked. I don't know, for some reason, that got to me, you know? I was once having sex with this woman, and now she's dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are other things, other ones that bother me a lot because they're people that are close to me, but that particularly made me feel as though I wasn't getting any younger. That was for damn sure. And she died in her sleep. She had a heart attack, you know. However, you know the story about Bob Rubin, don't you? I've heard this story. I didn't know it was true or not. Our friend Bob Rubin, the comedian, uh, was having sex with a woman one night, and she had a heart attack during the act and died right while he was fucking her. Okay, that's actually true. It's actually true. Wow. Okay, I thought it was just a bit he was doing. I said, how did that affect you? He said, well, I was put off on that for a couple of years, (laughs) you know. You know, it, it it gives a whole new perspective, I guess, to having sex with somebody. You know, <laughs> either that or you. Uh, uh, I said to him, "Here's what one guy says to another one." And I heard that story. I said, "Did you come first? You know? <laughs> and he went, "Well, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. But uh, also, isn't there a certain pride you can take? Is that you fucked a woman to death? Yeah. You know, that, <laughs> Literally fucked her brains out. Hey, I may have been affected by that, and it may have been a terrible thing, but look at what I did, you know. <laughs> That's such a great story. Yeah, no, it's a terrific story. Are you kidding me? It's the best. Uh, but anyway, so, um, uh, you know, uh, here we are talking about death, you know. And, I, and I, I have people I know, I mean, like this guy Jack is 88. Heck, I may get a call tomorrow. Hey, Jack's no longer with us, you know. I mean, he's 88. Um, and as we get older, the people we know are older, so they start dying off. But a lot of them go younger than, than we are. Like my friend Dennis Hoffa on the Moonlight Bunny Ranch died at 62. Just, I guess they found him in his room dead. You know, he just had a heart attack while he was sleeping. I guess I guess the majority of people have heart attacks. It's while they're sleeping, you know. Yeah. Uh, Partly because of the uh, sleep apnea. Of uh, that could be, you know. But anyway, the point is that that when that happened, I went, "Well, gee, he's he's awfully young." That that amazes me, you know. And we had a friend, you and I, Robert Schimmel. Uh, Schimmel was a classic case of dying. How do you have a classic case of dying? Well, let me explain this to you, folks. Uh, Robert Schimmel had everything wrong with him you could possibly have wrong with you. I mean, he had he wrote a book called Cancer on five dollars a day. Uh, <laughs> he had any number of types of cancers which he beat, okay. And then he was having kidney problems and he was waiting on getting a kidney transplant when his daughter takes him out for a drive and plows the car into a tree and he dies. Yeah, the car that he had bought for her. Yeah. Yeah, but think about that for a second. He had all these other things. He had this, and his life was in turmoil. He had a son who who died at like 15 because he had some kind of disease that he constantly went on the road to make money, to pay the doctors, to get him help, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it is the most, one of the most tragic lives. It starts out with his parents who survived the concentration camp, okay? And, 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 of all the things that could get him and all the things were preying upon him, the thing that got him was his daughter driving into a tree. Yeah. Go figure. You know. Somebody somebody should do a movie about his life. It was so interesting. Yeah. So 
Anyway, is this is this uh, uplifting, folks? If you're listening, yeah. do, you, do you enjoy well, this? It's, it's, there's been some very. Uh, you and I were always kind of fascinated by death. I mean, so was Woody Allen. So there's some some good minds like to talk no, about it. No, I I don't. I'm not fascinated by it. I fear it. And, and yeah. w- w- most of Woody Allen's work always contained that fear of dying. You know, uh, he. Uh, I think that I read somewhere that he said he finally has come to terms with it. That as he's I hadn't heard older, that. That'd be I'd like to read that. Maybe that's why his movies aren't as good as they used to be. I don't know, you know. Uh, but I mean, he he uh, he was one who was supposed to had a had a paralyzing fear of death. Mm-hmm. So you know, and, and look how old he is now. So he he lived uh, he he lived he's lived long enough. You know, I mean, if I go tomorrow, hey, seventy nine ain't bad, you know. But I'd like it to be a hundred and fifty. <laughs> you know, or as my wife puts it, I want to live long enough to see Trump out of office. So you know, <laughs> imagine having to die and Trump's still president. That's not good. That could happen. That could happen. Well, I have a you know my ex wife Ronnie is dying, literally dying. Uh, she has cancer. And we don't know how long she's going to live. But then again, you know, what's really strange is that if you fear death, it's because, you know, you don't know when you're going to, when you're going to die. Uh, but when you know that you are dying, you, still, she's almost my age. So uh, it, it, she doesn't know how long she has, in spite of the fact that she knows she's dying. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's kind of the yeah. same as you and me. I could uh, tomorrow come down with something and die before she dies of the cancer she's got. So, you know, it, it, I often say to her, you know, how do you feel about this? And she says, well, I don't know, you know, how long I've got. You know, doctors say it could be this, it could be that. We don't know. We'll see, you know. Um, so, I mean, I, you, aren't you the one that said uh, you want to know um, – uh, when, well, no, when, uh, wouldn't it be neat if you knew what day you were going to die, but not the year? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> not the year. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't know how long I've got, but, you know, as I get older, as, as I reach this age, I start, I start seeing that process happening to me, and it depresses me. I mean, if I'm alone in a room at night and... Marjorie is asleep. I've never told her this. I go, go into a panic over this. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm spending the rest of my life being depressed over the fact that I'm going to die soon. Now, soon for me, it will soon could be one minute. Soon could be another twenty years. My mother died at a hundred, but yeah. nevertheless, that's sooner than a lot of people who are like thirty are looking at being soon. You know. It's, you know, so it, it, it's who knows, but a belief in God. I, I'm jealous of people who believe in God, because they've got an out. You know, they're comforted by this whole notion that oh, well, if I die, I'm going to go see Uncle Uncle Bob again and Aunt Mary and you know, and cousin Susan. You know, so um, uh, that, that's nice. They have that. I don't have that. You don't have that. No, but I, I'm, you're right, though. If you, if you did have that and truly believed it, you probably would be very happy. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm dying. But we're Go- not buying it. Goodbye, I'm going to see your mother, you know, or I'm going to see Aunt Maud. And uh, it's been nice, kids. Goodbye. <gasps> you know, the death rattle. I, I told you the story about my friend Marshall Efron, uh, who, and I don't even know if he's still alive, but Marshall Efron, who... Uh, for years was trying to get on the Dick Cavett show and couldn't quite pull it off until one day they booked him on the Dick Cavett show. So he goes on the Dick Cavett show and he's on there with this guy named Rodale who who wrote books on how to live longer and so on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know this story. And while, while while Efron is being interviewed by Cavett and Rodale is on the couch next to him, all of a sudden, they hear this weird sound, which is known as a death rattle. It's supposedly some expulsion, expulsion of air that you give when you die. And they look over, and Rodale is dead. They cancel the show. They don't broadcast it. 
and they never invite Marshall back because they consider him bad <laughs> luck. He's bad luck. <laughs> so, you know, what's worse than death? It's getting banned from the Cavett show because you sat next to somebody who was inconsiderate and died. Oh. <laughs> and the guy just given a speech about here's how you're going to be able to live longer. Oh, good. Yeah, I think he was the head of Prevention Magazine was the magazine that he uh, he ran. And, uh, you know, when guys go like that, like when Jim Fix went, remember Jim Fix, the runner? Right. And he, he do this thing on Jim Fix running. And if you run, you will live longer. Blah, blah, blah. Dies running. Ah, I, I felt will, I felt I will re- jogging. Yes. I felt really good about that one. You know, he as, did, he as fu- did the uh, the guy that invented the power bar died while jogging. So. Really? Uh huh. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do you now? You you jog. You run. Yes, I'm going to run after this. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. could be our last talk. I don't know. Yeah, you run. Uh, how many days a week do you run? Yeah, every other day. So like four four a week. Four a week. Okay. Do you think that's having any negative effect upon your body? I think it's pounding my joints pretty badly. Yeah. Yeah. So you, there, there. So f- running is not the healthiest pastime you could take up. Probably not. I would think uh, the more I'm reading, I think probably walking is better than running. Uh, riding a bicycle. Yeah, that's bad for your prostate. Is it bad for your prostate? Really? The seat puts a lot of pressure. It makes a. Uh, there were some guys that uh, were Do you know reporting Mike? their impotent. Young guys it, reporting their impotent because it puts so much pressure That's on that nerve it, in the pro, around the prostate. You know, area. it's interesting, but my prost- PSA has gone up since I have been working out, and I do the cycle. That's all I do. Do 25 well, that minutes. That could be I, it. That seat puts a lot of pressure in that area. It could be, yeah. But, but, yeah. but you know, that could be cause and effect. Yeah, could be. You know, but. What the hell? So, so the running, the, so you don't know that the running is not necessarily adding to your life, as it were. It's uh, well, it keeps the weight off, and it's lowered the cholesterol, so it's good for that. Oh, it's good for that. Yeah, it's good yeah. for the heart. You good know, for the heart, just uh, the the knees and the. <laughs> but there are a lot of other exercising you could do that's non-impact. Yeah. That that would uh, probably be just as good. I used to swim, which actually adds fat to your body, so that was not good. Well, it does, no, it does, but it adds muscle, not fat. It adds an extra, because your body, uh, because you submerge yourself in cold water, it starts to develop an extra layer of fat. Have you ever noticed people who, who do that, you know, uh, that they, um, um, uh, swimmers, they get, they have the swimmer's body. Have you ever noticed yeah. it? It's a spe- it's very unique. And I used to have swimmer's body because I used to swim a lot. Uh, now I have uh, old man falling apart body. Old man <laughs> falling apart body. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> everybody, this is where you laugh. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think we're star stuff. I think something there's something to that. I, I mean, I look at the universe and I go, I'm just such a, you know, I, what I don't understand is why a guy like Donald Trump doesn't understand that he, in the total scheme of things, is insignificant. You know, right. that, that, <laughs> that this planet still has at least another billion years in it before it falls apart. And, and that he is just such a grain of sand in that time. That he doesn't matter, you know. Well, that reminds me of the uh, Wednesday. Uh, John Lovitz was grousing to Carvey about his career, and Carvey said, "John, do you realize after today there's going to be another billion years?" And Lovitz goes, "Well, then this means nothing." Yes, it means nothing, <laughs> and and you're an individual component, so it means even less. <laughs> you know how many how many people do we have on the planet earth right now so you take that uh, that little grain of sand and you separate it into all those people so why do we even care about a donald trump and why does he care about being king of the world i don't understand it it should be, it'd be something that we just don't even you know so that so watch that program on space i think it's it's on now in various okay, planets areas. planets the planets okay. and you just sit there and you're in awe of the fact that all this happened over billions of years and that you're here 
for, you know, what, 80 years, 75 a flash. years? It's a flash in the pan. And, and so let's not take ourselves that seriously. Right. And let's spend the time we have here having a good time. Have you had a good time, Bubs? Uh, one year out of <laughs> one year out of ten, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm asking the wrong guy if he's having fun. I did find I did find a great place where you and I should retire. There's a, a place in Southern California called Mount Disappointment. <laughs> really? Yes. I looked at it on the map. I Is fell over. Mount Disappointment? Mount Disappointment. Uh, look, find out where it is. Let's see if there's any property available. <laughs> we have to buy a lot there. Just to say we own a lot on Mount Disappointment. <laughs> Only you would find that. I know. I just was looking at a map and saw it. It just jumped out at me. It's, it's Southern California. Hey, listen, we've run out of time, Bubs. Well, it's great talking about death and disappointment. When you, whenever I call you, you have something that you start me talking about. Yeah. And and this time it was death, and I feel so much better about death now. It's been very cathartic. No, I don't feel better about death. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Talk to you soon, Alex. Still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, there's Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Don't we all love Larry? We love Larry. Yes. Yay. It's Larry Bubbles Brown. Let me see here. Let me get some of my audio going good here. So we got a decent uh, sound. Uh, there we go. All right. We're fine. Anyway, uh, let me see here. I'm going to open up the Skype line so we can start talking to our citizen panel. And uh, let's see. Um, oh, that Mount Disappointment, by the way. The lines are open now. Uh, that Mount Disappointment, I looked it up. It does exist, and it is down in Southern California. And uh, it was named Mount Disappointment because I think it was the Army or somebody wanted to put a base on the highest peak they could find in that area. And uh, they, uh, they were going to put it there, and then they found another higher peak so they named that one Mount Disappointment. And there is a Mount Disappointment in Southern California, a place that I think Larry and I will both move to and, and probably live our lives out in quiet desperation, which would be wonderful. Anyway, so we're waiting for people to call. I'm getting my panel stuff all set up. And, uh, you know, I, one night nobody's going to call, and then that will be it for me. Uh, but we are, uh, we, our lines are open, folks, if you want to call. So, uh, Other than that, nothing much happened to me today. I have a story to tell, but I'll wait till people start calling to tell that story. Uh, so anyway, uh, boy, where is everybody? Uh, we are on, aren't we? We are putting out a signal, are we not? Yes, we are. Uh, so uh, everybody should, oh, here we go. Here comes Jeff Stein. All right, so we open up Jeff, and I think Jeff was up on last night. Uh, let me see here. Here comes Charles Wallace. Charlie was on last night, and Phil was on last night. Let's see if they all take the places that they were supposed to, they were in last night. Let's see here. I don't think, I think Charlie, uh, let me see here. Uh, Phil, you need to turn on your Post picture. To, they were in Wait a minute. Oh, really? Night. Let's see here. I don't think I think Charlie. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, I got to do uh, something. Phil, hold on a second. Turn on your picture. Hold on a second. I need oh, really? to. I need to turn my sound off. Hold on. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. Uh, I, I every now and then uh, that happens, and I have to make sure the sound is turned off. All right. There we go. Now we're fine on that. I got so many things I have to do when I'm a one-man show here. Anyway, where are we? Okay, there we are. All right. Now, if I push the button, boom, there they are. And now I got to add Charlie in here. Hold on a second. Uh, because Charlie wound up calling late last night, so he got in on the yep. other one. Let's see here. Here we go. All right, there we go. You'll see him in a second. There's Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hey. How are you? How you doing? Oh okay. look! Look at that! Look at that citizen panel! Aren't they a sweet bunch? Um, 
I had a nice thing happen. Interesting thing happened to me today. I have these uh, earbuds, these Soundpeat earbuds, these Bluetooth earbuds that I just love. They cost me 49 bucks because I got the most expensive ones because I had the ones that would re recharge longer and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Uh, but mm -hmm. I could have gone with the cheaper ones, which are only 28 bucks. But anyways, I was taking my earbud out. It, I dropped it, and when I picked it up, the thing had split, the front from the oh. back. Okay? Now, I, I clicked to put it together, and it was, still was working, but it, I couldn't get it to hold together. Uh, you would think you could maybe, like, clip it together, and then you would hear it snap. No, it didn't. <laughs> So I, then I had the same problem with three hundred dollar pair of bows. Yeah, yeah. And if it happens within a year of purchase, they'll send well, it. Uh, they'll give you a new one. Well, this company and this thing was only forty nine bucks. Uh, first, I ordered a new pair on Amazon. And then I thought, I'll call them. I'll see what happens. And I called them, and the woman there said, Oh, well, just give us your email address, and we'll send you some stuff. And uh, they'll uh, they'll want the material of where to send it to and give us your Amazon order number. Okay, I gave them the Amazon order number. I got a letter tonight. It said uh, take a picture of it, and I told them I couldn't take a picture of it because I had glued it back together and you couldn't see the damage. Uh, I said I could pull it apart for you, but that that wouldn't be fair either. And I said, but um, uh, I I glued it together so it would keep working. Uh, I said, but take it from me, the thing split apart. And they said, uh, just uh, tell us your address and tell us your name, and we'll send you a new pair. Keep the pair you've got, you know, uh, but we want you to get a new pair. So, ta-da! There's going to say, hopefully, I'll get a new pair of uh, sound peats. They were very, very good company. So, so what are you preoccupied there with, Phil? Oh, nothing. I'm just playing with the Zoom. You got some slapback? Or is that me? That's you. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're 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 working on your Zoom, are you? Yeah. Hey, I had a nice evening. I came home from work. Yeah. I was uh, I was hungry, you know. So I had a I had a you big were, glass of juice. You were peckish. But it wasn't enough. You were peckish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went around the corner to Ruth's Chris, and I made it one minute before the end of happy hour. Mm -hmm. I had uh, a, a chopped salad. And the ahi tuna, mm -hmm, very good. and uh, you know it, it was good, but and iced tea, you know I didn't have any wine, didn't have any booze, just iced tea. And what do you put and, in the iced uh, tea? What do you put in the iced tea to sweeten it? A Splenda. Very good. Okay. And then uh, you know I was still hungry, so I had a uh, lettuce wedge good? with uh, yeah with blue cheese and bacon. Ah. And it it was good. You know, they make it cold. Yeah. They, uh, they they just do it perfect. Well, the blue now I'm full. The blue cheese dressing. Eh, I'm not going to wear my hat. It I was real blue it. cheese, you know. Yeah. Uh, blue cheese has no carbs in it. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, lettuce has so few carbs in it, you can't even really count them. Yeah, and it's mostly water. The bacon has no carbs in it. You had yeah. the ahi tuna, no carbs. Right. Okay. No carbs. And uh, you had the, uh, what did you say you started off with? Uh, uh, a chopped salad. A chopped yeah, it had salad. a couple of croutons in it. Yeah, that, yeah I ate well, them. But, well, yeah, Maybe but, four croutons. But you can pick the croutons up. Four croutons isn't going to kill you. Uh, yeah. No, nah, I, I picked them up and I put them in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> See, I should, I should start a show here called going on a diet and tell it you know because i these days i see although i think I'm, i don't know i think i'm putting weight on i haven't weighed myself in so long my pants still fit me okay so you know mm -hmm. the tight pants i bought so I, I assume i'm okay but uh i see so many people who are fat yeah uh, especially in my neighborhood and i'm not i don't want to be i'm not being racist when i'm saying this and yes you I, are I, no i think charlie will <laughs> he, charlie knows exactly what i'm going for right charlie i sure do <laughs> i think black people have a weight problem no they like big butts no no <laughs> hey, Kardashian butt. that's the excuse that's the excuse well am i right or wrong charlie i mean uh, there seems to just what be fried chicken and all that fried food do we eat yeah that and the fact that a lot of them are not wealthy and so they have to eat stuff that is um, what's the word i'm can you not not bad for you 
bad for you. You know, you can afford to go to Ruth Chris and get yourself no yeah. carbs at all. I can go on a no carb diet and I have enough money that I can buy bacon and I can buy eggs and I can buy steaks and chicken and things like that. But if you're poor, you know, you're yeah. going to eat uh, stuff that just fills you up. And what yeah. fills you up the most? Carbs. So, yeah. But I see, you know, I see a weight problem among a lot of black people. I mean, in this neighborhood, there's I, a weight problem everywhere. Well, now that I'm. I'm so conscious of it now. Well, the United, that, you know, making better yeah. choices. Yeah, but the and, United, and, the, you, and, you said this the last time. We'll wait to see if this works out for you, Phil. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with this. You know, I'm, I'm happy saying no to the booze. I'm happy saying no to the meat. Yeah. Uh, well, no, you, you know, you, even though hey, I you can was have it, you can have steaks. the meat. You can have the meat. I'm trying to stay on like why, uh, why, uh, why, why not plant based? Why not the meat? <clears throat> Well, you, you choose to go one way or another. I, I don't want the inflammation that the meat causes. What so inflammation? So I'm, I'm going to try more plant-based things. I, I eat nothing but meat, mm. to tell you the damn truth. You don't have diabetes. Yeah. Uh, well, I, no, I, uh, no, no, I went but, to the hospital this what, morning. Well, wait a minute. Uh -oh. Meat isn't going to give you diabetes or inflame your diabetes. I'm sorry. No, but it uh, creates inflammation in the In fact, in the wait, a minute. Let, wait a minute. Let's ask the expert on diabetes. Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> no, me too. That's what they recommend me to eat. Yeah. 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 They well, they do, but you can also do it plant based. Uh, so, you know, I've done it, uh, you know, with well, the let fat me Let me tell you something about those. plant based uh, diets. Can I tell you something? Uh, yeah. Do you know that that stuff grows out of the ground and you know where animals shit? <laughs> Yeah, but I get the okay. organic. Meat. I make it a policy <laughs> never to eat anything that grows out of the dirt. Okay, because it's they don't yeah. call it dirt for nothing. Okay, I wash it off. Yeah, well, they uh, wash uh, it uh, off. Uh, 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 yes, Jeff. Well, I, I probably lost I don't know 40, 50 pounds over the last couple of years. Yeah, and my strategy has been just to eat less. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a, that's a a. a Pretty good strategy. Do you do uh, do you do desserts and things like that? Uh, occasionally. See, I don't do. I'll tell you what it is. I don't do uh, sugar at all. Uh, so I don't do desserts. And the reason I don't do the desserts is that sugar is um, addictive. If yeah. you if you have sugar, you want more sugar. Charlie huh. again knows. Charlie's the expert on this. Um, so, uh, if you stay away from sugar, you're not, in other words, if you have sugar, all you want is more sugar. It, it, yeah. And I find that if you go a couple of weeks without sugar, you're, you'll wean yourself off of it. And quite frankly, I can sit around here and watch people eating chocolate cake and things like that. And it doesn't even bother me. You know, I don't even yeah. want it. I'm so weaned off of that, you know, so. Yeah. Well, uh. <laughs> I, uh, I went to Kaiser this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing something on Saturday, and I got a blister on the bottom of my f toe. And it was hard to walk. And I was worried that because I'm a diabetic, and if you, you know, Charlie has gone through this, yeah. uh, if uh, you get a wound on the bottom of your foot and it gets infected, you could end up losing your toes. So my thought was get in there, have them look at it, and determine what's going on and they just said they thought my shoes might have uh, uh, I should wear sneakers when I'm on my feet that long uh, at a time uh, because it gives more room between the toes well, you and finally said, uh, you finally hit old age where we all yeah, wear yeah, sneakers. so I said should I get orthopedic shoes and uh, no. They, no, you know, no 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 she no. said you know just just wear some wider shoes uh you know i think i never wear anything else but sneakers the other day i had to wear some hard shoes because i went to that wedding and my feet yeah. were killing me <laughs> yeah. I, am i, I wear, right am i right jeff i wear really good shoes i uh i have a number of pairs of uh, yeah, i see yeah. mephistos i don't know if you know what mephisto shoes are but they're like uh, a boat shoe that has a leather top and is dressy and uh 
I have two or three, actually we three don't want, pair. We don't want to hear how much style. money you spend on shoes, Phil. Well, no, but they're they're really good shoes. You're just bragging. So the doc, You're bragging. The doctor looked at them and said, you know, Mephisto makes sandals, and you ought to get a pair of those. Mm. You know, so that uh, you know your well, toes aren't well, as cramped. Well, for, to me, getting sandals is totally giving up. You know. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. Well, that shorts and those high white socks. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, and suspenders. You know something? I the other day for the wedding, I I, I only have one pair of black socks. <laughs> That's all I wow. have. Every uh, pair of underwear, every pair of socks I own, and every T-shirt is black. I don't have to. I don't have to think about anything in the morning. I get up. I get the the black uh, <laughs> uh, polo. Uh, co uh, collarless. Mm -hmm. I got black socks over the calf. They are all exactly the same from the Nordstroms. And then I got mm -hmm. Tony. Uh, what did I wear? Uh, 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 Tommy. Uh, Tommy something or other underwear. I got like 10, 12 pair of those. They're all black. They're all the same. <laughs> I don't have to worry about a thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every well, morning. Well, it's, be, it's because black is slimming, right, Phil? Yes. Yeah. You know what it also says. That guy's wearing black because he's fat. That's right. <laughs> and I am. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I am. Um, you know, I I just, you know, I'm just, but I, I, I pretty well kept the weight off. I think maybe I put on some pounds, a couple of pounds, but it doesn't matter. Um, because I suddenly realized, you know, when I, when I thought I had the prostate cancer, or maybe I do, I don't, I don't know. And, uh, you know, all of that. I started to think, well, you know, if let's say I, I dropped dead in a couple of years and I didn't have that cheesecake, <laughs> you know. I mean, um, uh, they're just things you start going, uh, well, you know, why am I losing weight? I'm not trying to get laid anymore, you know. So mm -hmm. why, why am I losing weight? But I'm going to keep it off because I feel better. With yeah. it off, you know, I don't feel as, as labored. Uh, you can you know. see your toes. And and you saw me a couple of weeks ago, right, Jeff? Did I gain any weight? No, you look great. Yeah. You look yeah. fine. So, you know, but I'm always worried about that. Jeff, did he have dessert? No. No? Uh, okay. Hey, listen, I, you know, I mean, um, I, 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 I just decided that, um, well, I, I, have, I have some money. Uh, and God forbid I should drop dead and not spend every penny of it, you know? And that's the way I look at it. I'm not leaving this for my kids, you know? A uh, girlfriend's got a uh, got an apartment across town <laughs> worth about four hundred four hundred fifty thousand dollars Hey, all she's taken care of, you know? Uh, so um, uh, why don't I just start spending it? You know, it's, it's sitting there in my 401Ks and my Vanguard's, and all it's doing, like in the last couple of days, thanks to your guys losing money, <clears throat> you know. Yeah. So um, it's uh, you know what what have you? Uh, it's just uh, eh. You know, it, uh, life's too short. But by the way, did you hear that thing that that, that, that uh, Bubs came up with? Uh, this place we want to move to. <laughs> no, what's that? No, uh, well, there's a place in Southern California. You look it up; it's there. Mount Disappointment, uh, and we want, we want we want to we want to get it. We want to get some t property right near Mount Disappointment because it's yeah. the perfect place for Bubs and I to live. I figured you'd want to live in Weed. No, I used to live in near Weed. Yeah, yeah. I used, to, in fact, I used to run a movie projector in Weed. I had a friend who oh, owned wow. a movie theater in Weed. The I believe it's called the Weed. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it, he, he was in weed, and uh, uh, he had this movie theater, and he taught me how to change projectors. Those were in the days when you change projectors. Now you just now it wasn't. Th isn't weed a schlep? It's above near Sacramento, in the on the in the foothills. No, no it's uh, in the it's 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 uh, actually it's a little higher than it's higher than the foothills of the. Uh, I, yeah. it, it was on the way. I used to work in Klamath Falls, Oregon, so that I used to go yeah. down to Weed and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but there's the town of Weed, and uh, I suppose it 
I wonder if they have, they probably legalized pot there now. Yeah, one Sunday I was on a motorcycle ride, and we just kept going and going, and we ended up in weed, and we had lunch at some place up there, and then by turned the way, around. By the way, uh, 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 Albert, when he was here, uh, had this vape, vaporizer, yeah. right? And he had pot in it, obviously, because he can buy medicinal pot in Florida, right? So he had it loaded up and everything. And then he showed me the technology. Are you ready for this? There is an pattern, app. Right? There's an app. And you can, uh, with Bluetooth, hook up to the vape. And then you can tell it how much, how strong you want it to be, you know, what the current mm. level is mm. of the THC that's still in the, in the cartridge, all that. You can run the vape literally from your phone. When I was a kid and I would get a cold, my mother would rub that vape on my <laughs> chest. And then she had a thing that put out like uh, uh, hot water in, it, uh, <clears throat> in the room. So I was vaping all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Especially when I was sick. Yeah. So, anyway, so I, I thought that that was, I love that, you know, I, I, being that I love technology. Well, I've learned to hate technology. I've gotten to the point where I just, the thing I hate most about doing this is the technology because it's always beating me up you know you created your own monster i did i did so far my uh, my uh, uh, what do you call it my internet hasn't gone out on this machine so that seems to be working okay so Good. knock on wood uh, but i mean it's just a you know, it's like I was telling, uh, who was I telling to? Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Durst uh, yesterday, that it used to be that the height of my technology, and Jeff will remember, remember this, was the light switch, you know? And with that technology, you flip it up, the light goes on. You flip mm -hmm. it down, the light goes off. If you flip it up and the light doesn't go on, you go to the light bulb and tap it, and if it still doesn't go on, you unscrew yeah. it and put in a new light bulb. And that was it. That and was And how many height. DJs did it take to do that? It was a height that was the <laughs> height <laughs> that was the height of technology. Yeah. But today, you know, I mean I have to know so much stuff to make this work. And and granted I was into this before any of you out there were into it, okay? I mean, uh, and... and uh, uh, I Phil remember when you had your Atari in the living room in uh, on the floor in uh, Sa uh, Sausalito. But it wasn't any... Had, no, it wasn't the game Atari. No, it, no, it was a computer. It was the Atari computer. Right. Yeah. 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 Why was it on the floor all the time? I Every don't know. time I saw it, I always like I always yeah. like to do my computing and my <clears throat> video editing stuff like on the floor on the rug. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why. I just found it more comfortable there. It was kind of a yoga for me. But anyway, I mean, you know, <laughs> I had a, huh? I had an Apple IIe. Apple IIe, right? Yeah. Well, you, I I had the 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 worst of computers. I had a Moro MD3, and it was CPM. Do you remember yeah, CPM, CPM before DOS or mm -hmm. around the same time? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but I. What a loser. Well, you know, I had an Atari and I had an Atari 400, and then I went up to the 800, which had a it's built in really nice keyboard, and um, but it was only 400 characters across as opposed to 800, which was what they did later on. Mine and, was like 80 characters. Huh. 80 characters, 80? and I had a green screen. Really? Well, I had a green yeah. screen, too. But uh, it, 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 the, uh, the Atari went out of business, and all the guys who were Atari went over to, in, to another company, and they started a thing called the Amiga. And mm. the Amiga was, in and of itself, the best computer ever built for those times. And I'm including the mm. Apple. I'm including the IBM. It was That's singular. Right. Huh? It was singularly the most sophisticated computer uh, around, and it, it. Wait, I had a I had a Commodore PET also. Well, Commodore bought up Amiga or bought uh. the Amiga from these guys that built it, and so it was a it was a literally called a Commodore. I think Commodore Amiga. I, th 
I don't remember if it was a reel or reel or a cassette that it used uh, to. Well, forget uh, about the Commodore. It was a piece of shit. shit but the, yeah. the Amiga was, it was the first uh, computer that was made entirely around a graphic uh, interface. In other words, it was yeah. meant to put out full television uh, quality graphics. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about, Charlie? You seem to be nodding approval on that when I mentioned Well, that sounds familiar. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why my friends were able to build a thing called the uh, video toaster that you put in the Amiga, and it turned it literally into a television studio in a box. Mm -hmm. And, and it, 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 because this computer was capable of doing that. They couldn't build it from the, for the Apple. They couldn't build at that time. They couldn't build it for the for the PC because they couldn't, they didn't, the end product was not an, what they call an NTSC output, which was a television output, but it was with the Amiga and they were able to do it with the Amiga. And it was, it was, it was just a wonderful, wonderful computer. But of course it went out of business, you know. You took me to a place uh, down uh, just south of market where it was like on the second floor, and I don't remember if it was a Lucas thing or something, they, they had a hallway, and the guy at the end of the hallway had a video camera, and then they had like uh, these banks of 35 millimeter uh, projectors. There was like 10 projectors in the bank, and they had uh, some sort of program that was run by a reel-to-reel, -reel, and the, they would dissolve the different photos, and they, were, they made a video of it. And uh, I thought it was just the neatest thing in the world. And that, that had to be I around 1980. I, I don't remember what you're talking about. You took me there. I don't know what it was. Uh, I, could it have been uh, light in motion or uh, one of those? It was on the second floor. And uh, it was very cool. And I have no were, idea what you're talking huh? about. No? No. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. He does. He has an idea of what you're talking about. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I really don't. But did you guys ever use this uh, AutoCAD program? Uh, well, I know uh, of AutoCAD. Something similar. I know of oh, AutoCAD. Oh, you probably used that as an engineer. Hmm? Did you use AutoCAD? No, okay. A, a lot of people in so, engineering used uh, AutoCAD. Yeah. yeah. So uh, AutoCAD was originally being sold on all the Apple computers. And that was a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. Well, somewhere in the middle, after a year or so, Apple said, "We're not going to su we're not going to support that anymore." Did they make their own? No. Hmm. AutoCAD, though, Why if I remember correctly, happen? AutoCAD had its uh, main offices and may still have it. I think Sausalito. Still, you no, know, Marin Probably. County. They're still, Marin County, they're San still Rafael, Rafael, outside of San Rafael. Yeah, okay. I, I thought they were in Nevada, Marin. Nevada. Yeah. I thought maybe you guys knew what the relationship that screwed the whole thing up. But. Well, a lot of those companies went out of business because, uh, well, I mean, technology came along and and, and made it a, uh, a thing of the past is what happened. Oh. You know, uh, and um, uh, I, I know that, for instance, today... What was done with the uh, with the video toaster, and what later was done with the thing that uh, the company I worked for, Play, built called the Trinity, which was a big box, which we called a television studio in a box, which it truly was. Uh, today, all that can be done with software. I'm doing yeah. it now. This thing I'm using to switch this show um, uh, does essentially what the Trinity used to do. And it's a free software program running on my computer. So all these things, you know, went out of business just because tech newer technology replaced it. Does the hard switch like the toaster, uh, is it more consistent than the software or, the uh, toaster wasn't a hard switch. It was all software. It but, was also but, but you needed but what, but, what about but you needed this this card like the black you needed magic this card that went into the um, into CPU. the into the CPU into the computer it, it yeah. went into a slot because it was that card that was doing the work well that made it not a software program but really a hardware program that was software driven 
I see. Okay. Well, everything's software driven in one way or another. Yeah. So, uh, but that has changed. So far as Black Magic is concerned, I, I think as a company they fucking suck. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, I, you know that, I, that's I, a who, physical who want, switch. Who wants to pay those? No, they're not physical switch. A lot of their stuff is software. Well, I, I've seen it. it, it it's a it, monitor. It, it, no, no, no. It, that's that's one of their things. But basically, yeah. they have a lot of software as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's they right. sell. Because most stuff can be driven by software now. I mean, as I say, this program is going out completely using software. There's no... Uh, I'm trying to think. Is there any hardware? The, you know the hardware I'm using? The hardware <laughs> I'm using is the audio board. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's the only piece of, piece of hardware I have in here. And we could say that the switcher I'm using, the thing that, you know does that folks uh is uh th that's that's uh that's uh, uh you know um uh, you see it on the youtube well the thing. the thing that's switching it is hardware you yeah. know the thing that's making but, it run is software you know so it's but uh, but uh, all those things that were once big uh suddenly became nothing do yeah. you remember computers like the K-Pro and the Osborne uh, and uh, the Compact that the mm -hmm. face came off and uh, it had a little little tiny four-inch screen uh, that, that uh, only had a few characters across? Never had anything to do with any of those computers. Did you know what they were? Yeah, I knew what they were. I yeah. just didn't like them. You know? Yeah. They were CPM. You know, I mean, up until up until a few years ago, I was a I was a PC guy most of the time. I knew people that were like Mac users, but I considered them doofuses. Uh, you know, uh, the guy who invented CPM got the call first from IBM, and didn't return the call. Gates returned the call and sold them DOS, and uh, the the rest is history. Well, I mean, but he, you know where he, he didn't invent DOS. No, he bought it from somebody. Uh, I can't remember the company, but he bought it for, I think, 50, 50, grand. 50 grand. And then yeah. he, he did a few tweaks to it and then walked into IBM and said, here's your operating system. And they loved right. it. They already had an operating system. In fact, I think they right. were CPM, as a matter of fact, uh, at, at IBM. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and, if and it they was, were, why would they have well, called the guy? Because they were looking for their own proprietary uh, system. So here's how Bill Gates became the, the, the one decision Bill Gates made that made him wealthy. Okay? He went in into uh, IBM. He said, here it is. And they said, they looked at it and they used it. And they said, yep, we want it. And they said, uh, how much? He said, well, we'll... We're, we don't want to sell it to you. We want to uh, let you, you know, use it from us. And what we want is we want the rights to use it in other computers. But here we will call it a, um, a P, what, what do they name it? Yes, IB, one or uh, IBM DOS or whatever. Yeah. And they then merchandise the same thing under something called MS DOS that other companies right. could do. And that's how he made money, was, was by s allowing them to use it proprietarily under one name, but being allowed to use it and give it to other people under another name. And IBM mm -hmm. went along with that, probably a decision they're, they're unhappy about to this day. Uh, a lot of companies make those mistakes, <clears throat> like Kodak. Uh, and uh, there was another, another company that gave uh, Apple... Steve Jobs, I believe, a whole bunch of the mouse and a whole bunch no, no, of other. No, that was that was that. No, that was. Um, was uh, Xerox did the mouse. Xerox. Yeah, it was Xer yeah. Xer Park Xerox. Xerox. W That's, Park Xerox, yeah. which was in uh, uh, near San Jose, and right. uh, he went in there and they said, "Anything you like here?" And he looked at everything. He walked out with the mouse and the graphical user interface again for about fifty grand, and it was the worst decision that Xerox ever made. <laughs> Right, yeah, you know, but they didn't see any value in it, you know. No. So, uh, all it takes is for somebody to see the value in it and then to ins uh, make it useful. And that was isn't it amazing? The Gates and Jobs did basically the same thing. <clears throat> the product that they uh, that made them famous, 
you know, if it wasn't for the graphic interface uh, on uh, Apple computers, it wouldn't have been what it is today. Now, of course, well, well, the iPod, you, you, and you, the don't, you, you don't know, but, you don't know mm -hmm. that uh, Jobs wouldn't have had somebody come in and create a user interface form or whatever. But here was something that already existed, and the mm -hmm. graphical user interface operated with the mouse, so the two went hand in hand with each other. Okay. So that's, that's what we came up with, and so here we go, folks, the mouse. You know, we still use it to this day. The only thing that's modernized about it is it's wireless, yeah. you know, and it's... Uh, you mine. see those ones that go on your fingers, and uh, it's a virtual keyboard and everything, mm -hmm. it, it, but it's but they, they go on like uh, little tips on your fingers, and then you, you, just, you type. Yeah. So Have is you any, seen that? Is anybody else going to call tonight? Is there a possibility that somebody else is going to call this program, or what did I do to offend you, or did Phil chase you off last night? <laughs> we got yeah. a lot. We got a lot of heat for you about you last night on our uh, uh, on our Facebook page. Yeah. Well, it's the it's the usual suspects. What, what do you mean it's the usual suspects? <laughs> I don't know those usual suspects. One of them yeah, I didn't know at all. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's the usual suspects. And, you know, if you talk about something controversial and it's something that people don't want to hear. No, they, they, were, don't, they, were, they weren't saying they didn't want to hear what you had to say. They just say you were making an asshole of yourself last night. Well, that's the way they felt. I was being honest with uh, my uh, thoughts. And if uh, they didn't like it, you know, they can stick it. Oh, okay. So, in other words, people who disagree with you can go fuck yeah, themselves. Yeah, kind of like those people. You know, they disagree it's with funny, me. It's funny, but as egotistical as I am, when people have had a complaint about me, I've paid attention to it. Yeah, not, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I say fuck them. So does anybody <laughs> else want to call? Because I do want to get into some politics stuff, and, and I need, I want yeah. some people who are, uh, Charlie and, and Jeff are good at this, but I also need some you know, I need a, a Ray Renati who gets his dander up or whatever, or his dander down mm -hmm. or whatever. It, um, or Josh. Uh, first of all, uh, Josh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, where He yeah, hasn't been here this week, has he? Uh, no. But he may be, who knows, he may be away on vacation for all of No, it's been vacation. I was in Maine yeah. for a while. Uh, you were in Maine? Yeah. Oh, nice. On the island. Oh, yeah? Which island is that? Is that the one that starts with an A, I think? Or? No, no, it's Tom's Island. Tom's Island, yeah. Oh. yeah. It's uh, an island that uh, my wife's father bought it. Wow. From a guy who was working with him. Named Tom? Said, he mm -hmm. said, you know, my uncle or my grandfather has this island, and he really doesn't use it, so... If you'd like to buy it, you can have it wow. for five hundred dollars. Unbelievable! Five hundred dollars for an island? When was yep. this? Nineteen twelve? Something like that. <laughs> well, probably he, in the fifties, uh, sixties. Yeah. And, and, and when were you were up there recently, right? Just uh, for last week, yeah. And now, is there a house on this island and water well, and electricity? I wouldn't call it a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by a full dimension. Uh, it was. It has a cab, you know. I mean, you yeah. can two people can, three people, four mm. people can sleep in it. Yeah. Uh, you could theoretically kick inside. Oops. Oops. It, guess what he's There's doing. Ray. Hello. Hello. It's Ray. I'll turn off my mic. Thank I heard you. you wanted people. I'm on my bike. <laughs> on bike. You're on. I'm on my bike, like, on the streets. Uh, Bub Bubble says that that can affect your prostate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, you yeah. gotta live. Yeah, you're gonna wind, like, you're gonna oh, wind up having. Oh, I got my picture. Oh, oh, uh, we also don't have a picture from you at all. No, it's just those girls I got in there. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm trying to get my video. Because going see, there. what happens is when, when I don't have your video. There we go. There he is. Okay. Hey. Now I can uh, go to what's, this. What's that metronome like thing? Yeah. Oh, that's that's the uh, the stoplight for deaf people. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. If they're deaf, how I'm do they hear it? I'm not gonna be able to do this. I'm on my bike. I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have to only. Hey, if they're deaf, if they're yeah. deaf, how do they hear the how do they hear the whistle? 
I mean blind. Blind. <laughs> Shit. I always get it mixed up. Are you blind are you dead. sweating? By the way, it looks like you're sweating. It's two hundred yeah, degrees. Hot as hell today. out here, man. That's why I waited till now. It was like a hundred and something today. Really? Yeah. Five. One hundred and thirteen here. Fuck. Was it one hundred and thirteen? Yeah. Wow. Oh, you boy, live I, bet, in, I bet you didn't. You live in I, I, I bet you didn't even leave the house, Charlie. Sure, I had to go bowling this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bowling. I got to get my dander up here. Oh. All right. Oh, okay. Get you. Uh, God uh, damn that, Trump. And, and, and you, what did he do? And, I don't even know what he did. What did he and do? Somehow you keep done? going. You keep going from portrait to landscape because you can't keep oh, your I'm phone. Oh, I'm sorry because I'm moving. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Look at that. There folks. we go. There we go. Oh, oh, that's a nice scene. I like that. It's kind of like... You like that? Yeah, I kind of feel I like I'm die. There. Yeah. Right, yeah we, we don't want to see you get hit by a car, though. No, that would suck. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I got it here on the front of my my handlebars. Yeah. But, yeah. you know what? I probably shouldn't do it because probably it's too dangerous. Oh, here, here, here comes Tony Magno, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Here. Well, you got people now. Well, I'm getting, sorry to get people. Well, I've, I've, I've had people. I've had the quality people call early. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. all this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Tony's yeah. okay. Tony's back in the space where he was last night. That's the fun part about it. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. And and look, Phil's going to get coffee. I'm getting myself. Tea. You look a little trimmer, Phil. Yeah. He's yeah. starving himself to death. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, I've been talking to several people the last couple of days. One of which was my wife, my ex-wife Ronnie. Why? Why? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Why? You, you look. Your face is all red, of uh, Tony. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. See? Whoa. I no, it's your else? lighting. To the beach today or something? Color balance. No, no. His, 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 your white his, balance is fucked up. His color Even balance is off. Looks a little red. Yeah. Oh, really? Should I log off? No. Or log back in? No. Oh, it won't do anything. I was actually in the house all day. I was recluse all day, really. <laughs> I mean, do you have a red wow. light on in the room? Yeah. Maybe I'll buy the lamp here? Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah. Even the wall looks red. Uh, hold on. I'm going to the other room. It's blood. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> blood. He finally did mom oh, in. Blood. Oh, it's well, the there red we on your go. Shirt. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I don't know what was there, there but yeah. Oh, now we have to look at the wallpaper of the curtain. There that's we go. Uh, we can see into the neighbor's house from the rear window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your uh, rear window, oh, and, oh, rear yeah. window yeah. and psycho going on. Yeah, yeah both of <laughs> yeah, the same thing. The wallpaper is psycho <laughs> and the window is rear window. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> now, now if you just had a bird fly into the house, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mm. All right. Anyway, anyway, where was I? Um, so anyway, I was talking. I was talking. I was talking to uh, my wife, ex-wife Ronnie, and then I was talking to. Um, who was I talking to? I was talking to Pearl today. Was it Pearl? No, no. Who was it? I was talking to, and everybody was always was uh, saying, that whole death of uh, of uh, uh, what's his name, Jeff. Je Jeff, uh, not Jeff. We Epstein. Need, uh, Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein. Jeff Epstein. You know, when you say Jeff is dead? Oh, Good old Jeff. Man. Somehow when Good I hear the Poo. when I hear, I hear the term name. Hello there, Kevin. How are you? Uh let's hey, see here. Uh let me turn them on here. There we go. There's Kevin. Uh, uh, um, that that they were all of the feeling that something was phony about the death of Epstein. You know? That somehow they, they 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 just can't understand how a guy who's in his cell with a bunk bed could kill himself yeah. and then they Jeez, were he, he but, used the sheet and he hung himself but how no but that's Wait, the question who? you he had to really do something to snap his neck he had to physically himself do something to snap his neck he was a smart enough guy to make a half a billion dollars well, robin williams did the same thing oh really robin williams hung himself on the doorknob with a belt Really, oh and, and Carradine, yeah. 
Carradine hung yeah. himself in a in a closet. No, but that was a sexual. Was thing. It, it, that was a sexual. What was that thing. Yeah, that's what it was. No. That was that. How was, do you know? How was, do you know Epstein wasn't having sex in the cell? He was trying auto asphyxiation. Uh, did Rob, he didn't snap his neck. He asphyxiated himself. Yeah, but Robin did what though? He asphyxiated. They both asphyxiated. They just choked themselves yeah. to death by leaning forward so hard in the thing they pass out and die. No, but this was so hard that it broke a, a bone in his neck. Oh, okay. All right. Which well, he might have used leverage. He might have used some leverage. I don't know. He, well, they, they say he would have had to. Like just pull down on it and so on in order to, in order to make that happen. It, it, it's it, that's uh, what happens when you jump off the top bunk down to the floor, and yeah. you no, don't no, put no, your but feet where, down. Where are you where are you hooking the belt to? Where are you hooking the, the uh, sheet bunk. to? But the yeah, top you got bunk. Two bunks. How how high do you think that bunk is? If if I stood up, at least I, five feet. I, yeah, that's about you. Would, it, it, that would be about uh, you know Epstein if he had jumped off the bunk bed would have landed on his feet with a lot of slack on the. Not if uh, you push your feet out and you land on your ass, then your neck's going to stay up there and your ass is going to hit the floor. All right. Well, anyway, there's a lot of people who are going. We don't exactly buy this uh, this no. story. Uh, uh, the guy's dead. He did it. Nobody yeah. else was in the cell. He. He, you know, his life was over. You know, he, he died. Let people pick at his bones and take his money, and they'll move on. Well, there, I don't know. Everybody's pissed he's dead, and quite frankly, uh, you know, I mean, I would think a lot of people would be happy he was dead. True. Are you looking for I a don't townhouse? Care. And by the way, Ray, turn off your audio, will you? Because we're hearing yeah, yeah. your we're hearing <laughs> okay. Well, I'm yeah. trying to make you feel like you're outside in the. In the Oh, we do feel outside. Uh, uh, who's calling us? Um, I'm not going to take it. It's audio only, and I don't want to take it. Okay? And it looks to me like Look at the phone number. I, I, it's, I, uh, no, it looks to me like it's what's his name. Well, it's, if it's 910, it's Doug. Doug. It's, it's 916, it was. 916 is Sacramento. It is? Oh, really? Yeah. No. Well, yeah. It might have been, uh, like, been Jack, maybe. No, it no, wasn't Jack. Jack's not Sacramento. Who's who's it's Sacramento? Mike or so. Dallas, isn't he? Mike Allen's in Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah, but Mike doesn't call this show. Yeah. So. Lucky you. <laughs> Lucky for me. <laughs> I don't know if I could take that cancerous laugh that often. Cha <laughs> <laughs> cha cha. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good. It does comment in the chat room. God, though, I so. felt like I was getting a call from Mike Allen there for a moment. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, where was I? Oh, so anyway, that, that that seems to be running around that little piece of uh, of, of of whatever, you know. Uh, then they uh, they caught the guy who was shooting at the cops down in Philadelphia. He gave up. Huh? Gave up. He finally gave up. Yeah, I mean, he ran out of pizza. Yeah, yeah. They say he may get life in prison for this. That'd be an improvement. Well, you know, it wasn't like he was shooting innocent people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, no, he wasn't su shooting innocent people. I consider innocent people people who don't have guns. Okay, but if you've got a gun and you then get shot, at least you had a fight. You, you, you supposedly. Have a, had a fighting chance. Guys are just doing their jobs. They got families. You know, they, they get up in the morning. Their family hopes they're going to come home at night. Mm -hmm. They go. They do the job. This guy broke the law. He was getting served with a uh, with a subpoena, not a subpoena. He was getting arrested. And, uh, you know, he opens up on these guys. And, Instead and, of just and, going to court, uh, wait, getting an attorney and, and, and using most his of, drug most money. Of the time, most of the time, um, um you know, these cops do come home yeah. in a great majority of the time. You know, one of them committed suicide last night in New York. They, uh, there have been six police suicides in New York since the beginning so six of the or year. Nine. Six, maybe, or nine, something like that. Uh, oh. and, and the mayor has uh, started a task force to try and figure out why this is going on. You know, what yeah, is he it? wants them to continue to do it. No, 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 stop it. What, uh, you know, they want to know what's causing these, guys, these cops to commit suicide. And 
you know, I can think of other jobs where people commit suicide like crazy. Postal employees commit yeah. suicide like crazy. Oh, Dennis, I don't see how people can work in a post office. I walk in there, and if you mail something, they circle the thing, they tell you about the tracking number, oh, yeah, they, they run different. you through this routine uh, each and every time. It's the exact same routine for each person. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that's caustic in there? Do you have any batteries or, you know... Uh, stuff that you shouldn't mail and it's the exact same thing they must go to sleep at night dreaming that and you know yeah it, it, i can see well, how, about, how about how about how about going from house to house dropping stuff in those mailboxes you know i mean yeah. and now I, I gotta tell you i got a mailman <laughs> here uh, who's a really nice guy and he he seems pretty sane he seems like he really actually enjoys the job but I, yeah. I, for the life of me, can't understand what he enjoys about it. And you know what else I thought would drive you nuts? And I bet there's a great suicide uh, rate among them. Dentists. Yeah, well, there are. is a high suicide rate amongst yeah, dentists. Yeah. Uh, because because the, the, just being a dentist is like, it's just carpentry is what it is. You know, uh, although I got to say this new dentist of mine is a fucking artist. But uh, it, it's, it, you know, pretty much one mouth after another doing the same goddamn thing. It's just in a different tooth. Well, I guess after working on your teeth, they might want to commit suicide. But, you know, there's some good-looking people out just there. Just the breath alone will get them. <laughs> I want you to know I, I'm getting close to getting a perfect mouth here, you know. And I don't know why I'm doing that because I'll then probably drop dead and I will are, spend are you all that whiten money. your teeth? You know, no. with that bright smile thing. Nah, and, you no, know. no, Because white and teeth look white. Yeah. So, you know, they look like you put a bunch of chiclets in your mouth. I was thinking about doing it. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> how you doing? Oh, Good. Teeth. How are you? Mm -hmm. Cheaper. So you want to move with uh, with uh, Bubs and I to Mount Disappointment in Southern California? <laughs> hey, sure. Why not? There is an actual mountain down there called Mount Disappointment. Where, where at? It's, um, I'm trying to remember now. Let me look it up here a second. Uh, Mount? <clears throat> I know I used to go to a this? place outside the grass, outside grass, no, not yeah. grass Valley, but uh, outside Yuba City called Poverty Hill. <laughs> Mount Disappointment, nice. California. Here we go. Uh, it is a mountain in the San Gabriel Mountains in Los Angeles County, California, with a summit elevation of 5,963 feet. It was named Mount Disappointment in 1894 when USGS surveyors sighted it from the Santa Susana Mountains. Believing it to be the highest point in the immediate area, uh, they decided to use it as the next uh, triangulation point. But when they reached the summit, however, they discovered that the San Gabriel Peak, half a mile to the east, was 167 feet higher, and it was a disappointment. So they were moved there. They were moved moved there instead. A Nike missile site was located there in 1955, and the summit was flattened to accommodate it. The missile site was abandoned in 1965. The mountaintop is now an important telecommunications site for commercial and government organizations. But it was named Mount Disappointment because it wasn't as high as they thought it was going to be. And that's what a great place to that's live. That's a disappointment. Yeah, I want that on my I want that on hey, my mail. Those okay. old Nike missile sites, they had silos, and people turned those into houses. And, yeah, and you know, and uh, very well, nice. Well, no, yeah. I, I need I, air conditioning because they were in the mountain. I knew a guy um, uh, when I was uh, with my friends at, at uh, um, uh, play. What was it? Uh, no, not play. Uh, uh, oh yeah, play incorporated. Wait a minute. No, not play. New Tech uh, in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, the guy who ran it, Tim Jennison, uh, had learned how to fly a helicopter. So one day he says, you want to go for a helicopter ride? So I said, cool, we'll go for a helicopter ride. So he goes, and we go, we're going over the, you know, uh, the Kansas plains there, and it's just wonderful to see all that. And he pulls down the, brings down the helicopter near a fence. And he said, okay, we're going to hop the fence. So he takes a helicopter and we hop the fence. He says, I want you to meet a friend of mine. 
And he takes me in, and what we're, we go into is a missile silo. And this guy had bought this missile silo and was using it as a business to build stuff in the silo. And so literally at one point I went in and looked at the silo itself, and there was the silo, but there wasn't a missile in it anymore, obviously. But a lot of people had bought up those missile silos, and there were a lot of them in that part of the country at the time, to live in. They made great accommodations, you know. Uh, and and uh, it was a great story for me to tell people years afterwards, and including right now. So, you know. But uh, there were a lot of missile silos there at the time. I love helicopters. You know, when you, when you start going up, uh, it, it's, it's just an unbelievable feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, y yes, uh, Ray. Yeah, I just stopped because of a huge coincidence. Uh, my first wife, her nickname was Mount Disappointment. It was, <laughs> it was amazing because every time she mounted me, yeah. disappointment. It was a disappointment. <laughs> okay. Was she Jewish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah. So anyway, that uh, that's a, that's a little bit of uh, a little bit of my history of going in helicopters and going to silos out in the middle of nowhere. But there were a lot of them out there, and people did buy them buy them up, you know. Um, anyway, um, let me see here. There's another big thing. How to live in Kansas? Huh. The, uh, yeah. we, our our um, today our our um, our economy got slightly better. I think we closed off at what a hundred something. In the yeah. on the plus side, but that hardly makes up for the losses that we had earlier this week. So, yeah. I hope all of you have a 401k or kissing your money goodbye. Just okay. remember, your loss is somebody else's gain. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, that's not. Yeah, yeah. It, I it, I wonder how much of a gain Trump is making off of all of this, knowing Big what's going to happen next. Yeah. You know, but because he won't tell us how much he's worth and what his investments are, we can't judge whether he isn't uh, using this as a big scheme to make himself a lot of money. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's going to write it Island? off anyway. What'd you, you say? What? And Island. Island. Yeah. clause. Yeah. It doesn't matter. He's going to write it off anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, it, the fact of the matter is that uh, it's not... Uh, it's uh, not uh, working out too well, this whole uh, tariff thing and all of his, uh, the way he's handling the money, because what it's doing is it's affecting all the foreign markets who are, uh, what are you doing, <laughs> Phil? Are you trying to distract um, us? What? Oh, you're, oh, you're leaving because you don't want to get into this conversation? <laughs> okay, fine. Because then I'll mention, I'll mention, That's well, he's gone. I will mention um, um, uh, the two congresswomen who weren't allowed into Israel. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What's the craziest thing? Uh, Rashida Tlaib, uh, or Taib, actually, Tlaib, I don't know how exactly you pronounce it, and Yehan uh, Omar uh, were denied permission to enter Israel with a bunch of other congressmen. Right because after his tweet. because they are right supposedly they are anti-Israel, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, they uh, were they were good. they were allowed until his tweet. Yeah, then he made a tweet, and all of a sudden they weren't allowed any longer. Yeah, they were all set up to go, and then all of a sudden they couldn't. Yeah, yeah, they were all set. And and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, what's his name uh, Netanyahu, uh, which is a merger of uh, Netscape and Yahoo. Uh, uh, Netanyahu, um, uh, about four, three, four months ago, said, "I'd like the United, uh, any United States congressman who wants to come over and see Israel to come be our guest." And so they took him up on the offer. And you're just trying to distract us, Phil, with that with that thing that you keep refocusing your camera and everything. I don't so see. It. If you feel know. like joining in on the conversation, join in on it. But I, I take that statue away, will you? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to be good, but he can't be good without being bad. He's a bad boy. Yeah. I want to know when. Anyway. <laughs> What were you, what were you saying, uh, Jeff? 
What, when is uh, Phil going to Israel? Yeah, when are you going to Israel, Phil? He's not going to leave the country. Uh, I actually have two tickets, and uh, they're standby tickets, friends and family on Delta. Uh -huh. And uh, I was thinking about using them to, uh, to go to Israel. But uh, I'm afraid to use standby tickets because if my luggage, if you don't carry on and you check in, like, your, all your camera equipment and scuba equipment, uh, it, you may not pair up. So I'm, I was a little concerned uh, uh, about that. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, I, I want to go to Israel, and uh, it, it'll happen soon. Yeah. You Let's know, go to Palestine I, first and come in that way. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know... <laughs> you had to they, think they support, about that one for a second, didn't you? They support the BDS movement as well. And uh, Talib and Omar, uh, you know, uh, I even, think they were only looking for a photo opportunity. Uh, no, no, they weren't know, looking for no, they were, I think they, was wrong. They weren't looking but, for a photo opportunity, Phil. They were actually going over there to talk to some, um, um, what do we call it, uh, uh, a protest. No, some organizations that deal with immigrants and things like that. Yeah, like Hamas. No, Phil, they weren't going to go talk to Hamas. You know, but the reason well, that was killed, wait, 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 will you let me finish, Phil? Uh, the reason they were going there was to talk to some human rights groups and things like that that, that, that are over there. And um, they had a very good reason for going. And uh, the fact that they were denied entrance to Israel, they say they people tend to blame on Trump because of a tweet he did, which then made the Israelis react. And the fact of the matter is that a lot of Trump uh, detractors, but also Republicans, are mad at what he did. I'm not mad, but I don't think that they should have been uh, excluded. Exactly. Uh, you know. Well, that's a, uh, I don't think that that was right. Yeah, uh, and, and it's and, doing to them what yeah. they do to us. And you know, that's and, not right. and let's 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 be. Uh, you're going to disagree with the statement I'm about to make, Phil. But it's it's you you can be against Israel and not be anti-Semitic. Okay, I, to to equate anti-Semitic being anti-Israel with being you know and against their political philosophies. And to be uh, anti-Semitic are two entirely different things. Uh, glad you believe that. Well, no, the, I'm the, the, the I, I've always been. He had, what? The tweet that he put out there was putting words in there. I mean, he was labeling them as hate. They are hate. No, they're not. But Phil. just because they're hate, no. I don't think that they should be excluded. No, they're not. Because he not. I believe them in free speech. Such. They're not hate. He labeled them as they such. are. They are. They are. Uh, they are against the policies of Israel. Which is fine, yes, because Israel is a political state. I am a Jew. Yeah. I do not consider myself an Israeli, and I do not agree with the policies of Israel. Okay? That, does that make me anti-Semitic, Phil? I doubt if it does, because I'm Jewish. No, it makes you a moron, but maybe not anti-Semitic. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I, I certainly, if I'm a moron, then I'm one of your people. Uh, you know. Are you anti-moronic? Uh, Mm. Uh, but I, I think that it was. Uh, I'm glad you felt that it was wrong of them to keep them out. Uh, you know, uh, they are yeah, congressmen. Believe, you know, they, they are congressmen, and they should be allowed in the country. D no one says Netanyahu has to meet with them, or they have to roll you know, out if, the red if carpet. The is, yeah. If the Israelis aren't doing anything that is uh, counter to human rights, they should be able to see it. And now, even though they were going to report it as, yes, they are doing it when they're not. Uh, you don't know how they were going to report it, Phil, because they never had the opportunity to do it. Uh, Talib and Omar well, do it that way when they don't go there. I have never found Talib or Omar, except Omar said one thing early on, and people took it as being anti-Semitic, but it wasn't. She just wasn't pro-Israel. And how can you be pro-Israel if Israel has been someone who has been going against your people for years. You know, you're going to have a certain prejudice against uh, uh, a country 
that has been oppressive towards your people, or what you perceive to be oppressive towards your people. So I think her, her dislike of Israel is logical. Okay, and, you may not agree with it, but it's logical. It comes from a logical place. Her people have been going after the Israelis and the Jews for thousands of years Phil, since the time of Abraham. Phil, since the time of well, maybe, maybe, maybe we pissed them off. What are we doing? We to just piss did. Them off? We, we I think, went the wrong you know, way. I honestly Oil believe. To the I, left. I honestly believe, Phil. For instance, if Hitler had met you and killed you, he would have been satisfied and stopped there. Okay, so see, you know, Omar and Talib are like <laughs> Hitler, and you know the Israelis oh, like wouldn't Hitler? let Hitler. Oh. He could Israelis stopped. wouldn't let Hitler visit Israel. Why let uh, Hitler likes of uh, Omar and Talib do it? They're anti semites I, I don't know. Uh, they're not anti semites <laughs> They are anti. And they support the Wait BDS movement. They are anti. Which is the what movement? Is BDS uh, the uh, the the. Uh, the movement that is uh, that doesn't want anyone to trade with Israel. Boycott uh, Israel, yeah. Yeah, the boycott Israel. So, I, uh, so I mean, I uh, don't believe any, I don't believe in boycotts, but uh, uh, you know, if, if, they, if they feel there should be a boycott, then uh, so be it. You know, I mean, what 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 what's the what's the big deal there? You know, I mean, they have a right to dislike Israel. I dislike Israel because I don't like their politics, and I don't like the way they've been treating other people. And I think that they do not represent, uh, I don't like them to call themselves a Jewish state because I don't consider them the Jewish state. They're not my state, and I'm Jewish. You know, and I don't like the fact that they can go around and have some bad fucking policies, and then it reflects against my people. Because they go, oh, well. Survive? Huh? I mean, trying to survive is a bad policy? Well, they're trying to survive in a place where they displaced other people who are trying to survive. Uh-huh. Well, if you got a beef, beef with the U.N., oh, wait a beef with the English. Oh, oh, I have a beef. beef, beef I, have a, I have a big beef with the U.N. because I think that was a big mistake they made back then. But it, they made it, and so we have to live with it. And it's now how many years later? And so, uh, you know, I, I think that the um, um, uh, Islamics have to, uh, have to mm -hmm. get along with the idea that, hey, you know, this is the way things are. It, it is no going back on this, but I think somewhere along the line, everybody's got to kind of cool down and everybody's got to start treating each other decently. And well, I that's starting to happen with the Saudis. But, you know, you, you look Saudis. at Israel and with you see the fucking, technology. The fucking Saudis you see, still? With the Saudis? Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, well, the Saudi, the Saudi government is being more pro-Israel than uh, they've ever been. Oh, yeah, and they're the pro-Israel, but, the they right but they don't mind killing people like crazy. Well, you know. then why would you support them over Israel? I don't support the Saudis. Never have. Well, I consider you know, the Saudis as bad as the Israelis. You know, all the good that this country did for Kuwait and for uh, a number of the, a, 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 the Arab Emirates and all of these countries that benefited from friendship with the United States, they don't do much to, to help the peace within the Middle East. They like this uh, tension. They like this. Uh, the Palestinians are not being helped by these people with all this oil money because they want them to be a thorn in the side of Israel. And, I, you know, I think that, uh, you know, things are coming around, but it's, you know, and, and then you ask yourself, how many Nobel Prize winners have come out of the Middle East? Where do they come out of? They come out of Israel. How, ma how many, you know, what have they given Phil, the Phil, world? What, what does that matter? What does that matter? It matters a lot. No, you know, they, they, they spend their money on war no, and on weapons and on hate. And, uh, oh, you know, Am I am I yeah. mistaken? But didn't there was a uh, 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 was it Yasser Arafat the one a Nobel? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, then shut the fuck up. Yasser Arafat was a crook. But, uh, and, no, no, wait a minute, uh, Phil. You know, Phil, you just said that those people do not have Nobel he, Prize winners, and I named uh, yeah for uh, science. Uh, Nobel for science. What? Not Nobel for uh, talking. Oh, oh, oh I see. Oh, okay. Is, 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 there's you only. Know what? Scientific oh, things scientific have they things, given the okay. world. 
Who, they, I nothing. don't give a shit what they've given Mom? the world. They, the science is not their bailiwick. Yes, yes, Charlie. Say what you were going to well, say. Well, Muslims save science. And when we're in the dark ages and no, there's no science going on in Europe, the Muslims save science. The, well, the, you know, it's nice to credit what happened 800 or 1,000 years ago, 800 years ago, you yeah, know? Show and, giants. Yeah. Uh, and Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci and uh, Galileo Phil, and all of these Phil, people. Phil, they had you know, you're the kind of it. asshole that would believe that would believe there was no culture in the Pythagorean. You're not listening to me. I am listening. You're saying that the you know Charlie says they gave uh, something to the world 800 you're years ago. You're the kind the concept of the zero is Arabic. We didn't even have a zero until Arabic came up with. It. From zero to hero. See, now you make a joke when you don't have an answer. Why is, not? He can. He can have to pressure him. Yeah. How come all you Jews all answer a question with a question? Why half not? the stars in the sky are named after Arabic words. Yeah, well, yeah. we got our language from the Arabics, but you know, Arabic numerals. So we got. What kind of numbers do we you're use? The, you're the kind of dope who would say today. Say medicine. Medicine. what? Well, that's the day we use those numbers. Oh, isn't that nice? I use my fingers. I just felt lightheaded, like I was going to pass out from all of this. I'm serious. Oh. Yeah. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, you're, you're the kind of dope, Phil, uh, who would believe that because people lived in the jungle, they didn't have culture. You know, uh, and 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 that that there are certain things you've got to do in order to be part of a cultured society, like invent something for science. You know, you can't give us a, a the zero. That doesn't matter. You you have to come up with something like you know, a cure for rabies. You know, I, come on, Phil. Now, who, come on. It wasn't the Greeks that. Uh, and let's say they, they let's say they the gave zero. nothing to anybody. They're human beings, Phil. They're human beings, and they did deserve to be treated Barely. like human beings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. boy. Let this yeah, then be the first step towards international brotherhood. Um, any word, thought on this at all, uh, Jeff? I notice your mic is off. What, you have a thought on this? I will give you my two cents. I've been to Israel twice. Yeah. For business. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting country. It's got a lot of problems. And if you look at the problems that it had maybe solved 20 years ago, they didn't get any better, did they? They're, they're pretty much a, a problem country. And I don't think they're just the Hebrews people, if you want to call them the Israelis, mm -hmm. causing the problems. It's There's a lot of people in that area of that country that... Uh, they're very angry about all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it, I don't see any real solutions to that area. And Trump adding to it? What an asshole. That's what I'm saying. Huh. You know, the zero was invented independently. See, he wasn't even listening to you, Jeff. He wasn't Indians. even listening to you. <laughs> he wasn't even listening people to you. People are just trying to go to work. You know, they got kids. <laughs> Just like anybody else. And, and, and they want to have a better life. And it's a tough place to have a good, as good a life as we do in the United States. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and you can say, okay, if you're an engineer here, it's different than being an engineer there. Yeah. If you're a doctor here... You're a lot more successful than you, than you are there. And now we're going to hear what Phil found out about the zero. It was yeah. invented by the, by the Indians uh, from India. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it, it's credit for the invention of the zero goes to an Indian mathematician. And the number first appears in a book about arithmetic written by an Indian mathematician. Uh, let's try the pronunciation. Okay. So, Brahma yeah. Gupta. Well, wait a minute. Wait Brahma minute. Gupta. L let's let's back off here for a second, Phil. A and you don't consider India like what one of those third world countries? Uh, 
you ever seen one of those Tata cars? They also own uh, Land Rover uh, and Jaguar. Uh, yeah, but like we're going from the invention of the Zero to Land Rovers. Come on, Phil. Yes, Ray. Yeah, I, I pulled over. I've just been listening. And, Phil, when Alex said that they're human beings and you said barely, I really hope you were kidding. Yeah. Were you? Yeah. I hope so. Oh, okay, cool. All right. That's all I wanted to check because that was awful. Yeah, I have I have some friends that are Saudi and okay, Iranian, okay. and right. you know I I have as much re respect for them as I have for everyone else, and you know and okay. you know I'm a respectful person. Wasn't yeah, I know you are, so I didn't think you meant. Wasn't there another guy who won a Nobel Prize from Egypt? Uh, well, uh, during the what the hell was his name? The guy who led Egypt, and Jimmy Nasser? Carter. Yeah, didn't he win a Nobel? Uh, yeah, I think so. There yeah. was three for of them peace, shared it. Yeah, for peace. Yeah. Okay. Right. So they yeah, make the war like and that. they make the peace, and and they well, get rewarded a, for making the peace. Well, I think Israel started that war, didn't they? Nah, there's been Wasn't a lot that of that. The, the Six Days War or the uh, sixty-seven uh, yeah. Six Day War. Uh, okay. They preempted yeah. the strike because they they uh, all the other countries were surrounding them and ready to strike, so they preempted oh, okay. and, uh, and 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 uh, staved them off. Oh, okay. okay. Knocked out their air right. force. And, I got uh, it. Yeah. Uh, it's just the, I'm going back home. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Nobel Prize, <laughs> Prize for Science. Science. Let's see here. Who usually it's. This guy uh, invented the zero. Uh, oh, okay, fine. Good. Uh, uh, Nobel Prize laureate. Uh, let me see here. For uh, science, uh, and, and you know. Yes, Phil. We know for science. Uh, all no, well, Nobel prizes for physics. Let's see who who has that won works. them. Um, let me see here. <laughs> here, here's one for you, Arthur Askin for the optical tweezers. Oh wow! Boy. Yeah. I got two pair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, let's see. Takai Kajita, he's probably ch uh, in Japanese. Um, you got to remember to begin with, uh, these, these prizes are given away by white guys. Okay, let's yeah. remember that. They're not white, they're in uh, Norway. Or... They're white. You can't, get more white uh, you can't get more white than that, Phil. Uh, oh, George F. Smoot. About him. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, they're all white guys uh, giving white guys white guy prizes. Mm. Xenophobes, homophobes. Yeah. Well, yada me, yada phobes. Let me see here, though. Uh, uh, peace. Let me, let's look for peace. I think peace is, uh, you know. Peace yeah. is overrated. Peace prize winners. Um, let's see here. Um, hmm. Uh, Trump. Uh, winners of the Nobel Prize for Peace. Okay, here we go. Um, oh, the, the people you never heard of. Theodore Roosevelt won one. Did you know that? Mm. Yeah, he won one. Guy who said, uh, walk, uh, carry a big stick, and, you know. Uh, Woodrow Wilson won a Peace Prize. And he was trying for that Peace. That was a fix. Too. No, he was trying for Peace. He was very big yeah. into that. Kami. Uh, let me see here. Other peace prizes. Let's go to the modern era here. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, the American Friends Service Committee. That would be the uh, Quakers, right? Uh, let's see here. Ralph Bunch, Albert Schweitzer, George C. Marshall, the United Nations High Commissioner on Refugees. Uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm looking. Linus Pauling, uh, the international. Linus the Pauling Red was Cross. a uh, bigot. Yeah, yeah but he still he? won the Nobel Prize. But he still won yeah. the Nobel Peace Prize. Willie Brandt, Henry Kissinger, Lee Duck Toe, who declined it. He was from North Vietnam. Um, let's <laughs> see here. Who else have we got here? Uh, uh, Amnesty International. These are all outfits you really like, Phil. So it's nice to know that you know. Anwar Sadat, Menachem Begin. They won it in the same year. Mother Teresa, that bitch. 
Uh, let's see okay. here. Uh, let's see here. Who else do we have here that uh, in recent times? Um, Isn't Mother Teresa hanging out with uh, Epstein? Desmond Tutu of uh, of uh, South Africa. Yeah. Ellie Weasel. Who was? Who, well, Weasel. Uh, <laughs> the Dalai Lama, Mikhail Gorbachev. Mm -hmm. You know, Nelson Mandela. Uh, let's see here. Yasser Arafat. Okay. There's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Uh, Shimon Perez won it that year as, as well as Yitzhak Rabin uh, because they were all working for peace at that time. Mm -hmm. you know? so, uh, Isn't Jimmy Carter? Uh... Jimmy Carter? He should have won it. What a good human being he turned out to be. Yeah. You know? Really great human being. Um, you got to even admit he's a good guy. Right, Phil? Come on. If you need somebody to monitor an election, he's your man. Yeah. And then a guy you absolutely love and probably agree with him getting the Nobel Peace Prize because the rest of us can't figure out why. Barack <laughs> Obama. Oh. I mean, was, even... Was, uh, let, me, let me ask... What did he do? I, yeah, I still, still don't know what he, he did. He wasn't Bush. He wasn't yeah, Bush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's really what uh, that, he did. That, that was a fix. Well, I, I don't know that it was a fix. I don't know that the Nobel Peace Prizes, uh, a lot of the prizes aren't a fix. But why, uh, Charlie, why did, do you remember why he got the Nobel Peace Prize? Because we he were all scratching. He got it because he was not George Bush, because George Bush was so warlike doing Afghanistan and, and Iraq yeah. and bombing people and stuff. They didn't know how Obama was going to actually be. He hadn't even taken over the office yet, I don't think, when they, when they gave him the Prize. Yeah. And he continued the war for another eight years. He didn't, he didn't stop anything. No, but hey, he, take his prize away. Him. Give me back like the that. money. Well, yeah, but you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got Trump who's literally begging for it. Yeah, I, you they, know, they'll give it to him. No, they won't. No, they won't. Oh, there's no way he's getting it. No. Yeah, he's going to put a hotel over in Norway. You know, if, if anybody who's gone uh, had anything to do with Norway is going to get the Peace Prize, it's going to be like uh, uh, AKA uh, Rocky, or whatever his name is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now, was that Norway or Sweden? I think it was Norway. Did he say something wrong again? Like you? No, he, said he had a fight. And 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 from what I saw on the tapes, he kept saying, "Hey, I don't want any trouble." And this guy, uh, you know, did a, co a como on yeah. him. Yeah. Well, you know, what happened is he he now is uh, uh, he's home. He's home, and uh, uh, they just gave him a slap on the wrist. Is what they really gave him. I think he, they fined him thirteen hundred dollars. That's it. Yeah. Well, that's nothing in Norwegian money. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Right. In, 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 in Norway, that's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, My crown was more than that. <laughs> huh? My dental bill when I went was like over a thousand. <laughs> like, Did you see your teeth? That's yeah. true. We should have been a thousand right. should just be the down payment. By the time you die, those teeth are going to be straight. By the way, Tony, I want you to know. I know. That. I'm so fed up with them. I'm going to have. Them. I told my sister, I'm so fed up with these teeth. I'm going to have. I should have my own casket for them. I want false teeth. I'm hoping for false teeth. Oh, you, oh, you don't want false teeth. teeth. You don't want false teeth. You know. I mean, you could just pick them up. I mean, how much work has to be done? I wonder. Well, you know, I lost one tooth here, and I want, I'm gonna, I'm going to get the implant, even though I probably don't need it. I can live without it, yeah. but I'd prefer to have an implant in there. So I'm getting the implant after the first of the year, because my dentist, my dentist, here's how she works, is she, and she's great at it. She says to me, she says, well, she says, here's what we got to do. She says, you need the back tooth filled, the one I showed you guys last night, the one that had like uh, was almost all metal and now it looks like a tooth yeah. um she says you need to do that and then we have to put there's a there's a temporary crown on a f uh, tooth in the front right here okay uh, right here okay it sounds expensive and, already and, and and so i need a crown that's going to cost me 700 bucks but what she said is you, you do this back tooth you're going to pay a third. I paid 69 bucks for that, and they paid the rest out of my insurance. Oh, she said, you've got so much money, $1,000 left in your insurance. She says, why don't we go work at 
using that all up so you don't leave any on the table before the end of the year because then on January 1st yeah it comes back it replenishes you get your $1500 your $2500 again isn't this person just working the system and you know no. why is she so brilliant if she's just well, looking no, what she's your making, maxes are no, but she, and, and no, making no, sure but she's working she the system it. but she also knows my mouth needs all this work so she's doing the teeth that really need it first if and then, and then, it work on your mouth. You should just wire it shut. No, she works it out so that I'm not paying much. You know, I've had a lot of work done in my mouth, and I think I paid a total of, I paid out maybe four or five hundred bucks for like deep scale cleaning and four fillings. Uh, what did she charge to get the foot out of it? Well, all I know is it. it, it she's really good. She's really good. I mean, I I feel like I, I'm getting my mouth back. You know. Hey, I switched insurance plans just to have my dentist because I have a dentist like yours. Yeah. And uh, he's so good uh, that I, I, I didn't care if I had to pay for it with no insurance. I was going to continue to go well, to him. Well, what this and is, so she, I, she's, I switched. She's in, uh, in, in network. Yeah. So, she, so I get the price that Delta Dental says she should be charging for any particular thing, which is a lot cheaper. Like the implants, usually about five thousand dollars. It's only going to cost thirty-two hundred, of which I'm going to pay half. Well, okay. I I had Delta HMO through Kaiser, and they didn't take that. So uh, I called up. I have a, an insurance guy through my company, mm -hmm. uh, and I said, "Well, get me insurance." So they got me a Meritas. They pay ninety percent. Uh, of of the stuff up to twenty five hundred dollars. Not so. I don't think it's ninety percent of everything because they have. Yeah, the, my, I, well, like some of every things, like fillings and stuff, they pay seventy five percent. Uh, for the implant, it's going to be fifty percent. For a crown, yeah. it's fifty percent. For cleanings, it's a hundred percent. Okay. What does your person charge for a cleaning? Uh, that I don't know because I haven't had a normal cleaning yet. I had a deep scale cleaning, and that is exceptional, and that costs yeah, a lot more. I was paying. I'm pay, I've been paying out of pocket $175 for a cleaning, and I, I go three times a year. Yeah, well, I paid 140, which was my portion of the deep scale cleaning, and I don't know what percentage that was of that, but yeah. uh, I uh -huh. needed that. That was a very. In fact, it's very strange. They said, I'm almost running out of time here, uh, they said that they could only cover one half of my mouth per visit. In other words, they couldn't Probably clean my whole mouth. It... They had to do half my mouth. And at one point, she went over to the other side of the mouth a little bit cleaning. Yeah, uh-uh, yeah, don't do that. We're, you know. But why? Why they didn't say, do it all at once, and here's what you're going to charge. It, 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 that mm -hmm. made no sense at all. I, and people complain about the price of carpet. Well, all I'm saying is that we know that if we're going to have, uh, 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 you know, medical in this country, you know, uh, medical paid by the government, Medicare for all, we should also have dental included in that as well. Because dental, I think, is very important, and it's important to your health, you know? Whatever. It is included in Bernie's bill. Yep. Good for Bernie. Unfortunately, Bernie's, Bernie's not going to get nominated, so. But what the hell? Anyway, that's Bernie. it. Uh, that's it for tonight, huh? Huh? Yeah, All right. It's a Bernie. Yeah. yeah, it's a Bernie. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, it has been a nice night tonight. It hasn't been too terrible, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, I, I got through it alive. Uh, we just lost uh, Ray, but yeah. thank you, Ray. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Oh, there he is. Uh, he come, came back just in time for the end of the show. Uh, thank you very much, Phil. Thank you very much, Tony. We appreciate your uh, existence here on this program. Charlie, great to see you, and always good to see you, uh, Kevin. And you can, you, you can, we all, we'll all move to Mount Disappointment together. <laughs> anyway, I'm Tony's in the red light district. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I don't know what they, that they red light. Like street now in the front, Alex. They make it so much noise in the city. Okay. Well, anyway, listen, we got to go. Everybody, right. why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. Aren't they pretty? Looks like the Brady Bunch. Anyway, uh, that's it for tonight. 
I'm Alex Bennett. That's our little uh, get-together. Let me get rid of everybody here, and let me also close down the Skype so that Jack Bishop can use it next for his program called The Intersection, which is next over most of this same uh, uh, gabnet. Okay? I'll be back tomorrow night after Damian Chaplin does the exchange at 9.30 at 10 o'clock. I'll be here, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, eh, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.